In the second half of chapter 9, we're going to be talking in the notes about the details of how cells go through cell division and mitosis. And one problem we have here is a lot of people in the general public think they know what mitosis is, and it's often something that we get completely wrong. In a scene from one of my favorite TV shows, The, the Big Bang Theory, they speculate on how Sheldon might reproduce, and they suspect he goes through mitosis. And it's a very humorous scene. It's kind of a, a cute little look at an asexual type of reproduction for definitely an asexual type of person. However, it's not mitosis. Remember, mitosis is the division of the nucleus. Um, if they'd called it binary fission, I guess it would have been a more accurate term, but most people wouldn't have known what that meant. People know the word mitosis, but don't always remember what it is. Well, most people think that mitosis refers to the entire thing that scientists call the cell cycle. And so we're going to talk about the cell cycle first here. And this term refers to the entire time period. We could kind of call it the life of a cell if that cell doesn't actually die. So it's the time period from after the cell is first formed, which usually is from a previous cell division, until that cell itself is done dividing. Now, the majority of that time for most cells, if we want to kind of be kind of stereotypical here, most of that time is not the actual division. Most of that time is the time in between. The time periods of a cell's life we refer to as the phases, and the phase in between cell divisions is called the interphase, inter meaning between. Now, interphase is often described as the resting phase of the cell, which is really a horrible description because this is actually when the cell is doing whatever it is that that cell does. If it's, if it's a glandular cell, this is when it's making its secretions. If it's a salivary gland cell, for instance, this is when it'd be making saliva. It's not exactly resting. This is when it does its normal job. When it, the cell grows, it'll double in size during this time period, and it needs to copy its DNA. And there are some cells that never leave interphase. Some stay in this work cycle part of its, of its lifetime and never divide again. We see this especially in some nerve cells, especially in the brain and in the spinal cord. That's why if you hear someone having a brain injury or having a, a broken spinal cord, this typically leads to lifelong problems, maybe a paralysis or some sort of lack of function of the brain that never comes back because those cells can't repair themselves through cell division. We often describe the cell cycle in a visual form, and you can see as any cycle, we can draw this in kind of a circle format. In this particular drawing, we can see there are a couple of exits from the cell cycle here. Well, this exit in tan is showing that at the end of mitosis and cytokinesis, we have two cells. This cell would then be going through its own cell cycle, whereas the new cell form here is showing how it's going to go through the same process that its parent cell did. The other exit would be for a cell that is going to spend the rest of its life in interphase and will die before it ever ends up dividing again. But we're going to focus on the cycle part of it right now. And in this particular cycle, the majority of it, as we've highlighted here, is interphase. In fact, we take interphase and subdivide it into three different sections G1, also called the gap one phase, the S phase, or the synthesis phase, and then gap two, or G2. Now, as you see in the diagram here, gap one is when basically the cell is pretty much doubling in size. This is, some people think the G stands for growth, and that's not a bad way to think of it. This is when the cell is growing. And at the very end of the gap one into the synthesis phase, this is when the chromosomes are going to start dividing. So when the chromosomes start to, I'm sorry, not divide, but start to, to replicate, when those chromosomes start replicating, that is the S phase. And S meaning synthesis of new DNA. And each one of the chromosomes will make a copy of itself. When they're done, then the rest of the time period is the gap two phase. During this time period, the cell tries to make sure there are no mutations in the DNA, make sure there are no problems kind of proofread everything, make sure there are no problems, and if so, then it's ready to go through mitosis. So mitosis being what follows interphase, and mitosis has several subdivisions also we'll talk about in just a minute, and then mitosis is followed up by cytokinesis. Well, we're going to take a look at mitosis for the majority of the rest of this chapter and see what those subdivisions are. And we're going to start with the first stage of mitosis, which is called prophase. 
You know, this is a very visual topic when we're talking about mitosis. And so in the upper right hand corner, I have a couple of photographs here. The real distinguishing feature of prophase is the fact that we can see individual chromosomes starting to form. The word chromosome means colored body because they stain well. And during prophase, as the chromosomes stain, we can see them being distinct from each other. As we look in the right hand picture here, we have a bunch of cells in the perimeter that are all still in interphase. And we can see the entire nucleus just is stained kind of equally. They used a purple stain on this one. But the center cell, which is in prophase, instead of having a, a smooth appearance to it, we can see will look almost like little worms inside. Those are the individual chromosomes that are forming during prophase. Because really the key feature of prophase is the fact that those chromosomes go from a, a disorganized form of chromatin into the rod-like form, the chromatid form. And this is when it truly is a chromosome at this point. Technically, during interphase, the chromosome structure isn't there. We should just call them chromatin at that point. Now, also during prophase, we're going to start seeing specific microtubules form, and they form in a structure that is called the spindle. The spindle gets its name from a kind of archaic structure on a spinning wheel. If you've ever seen something like spin, um, Sleeping Beauty, she pokes her finger on the spindle of the spinning wheel. The spindle is the area of the spinning wheel where the thread or yarn kind of accumulates. It ends up making a structure as the thread wraps around there, where it's kind of fat in the middle and thin on each end. In modern society, we might instead call this shape not the spindle, but maybe we'd call it the football, because we all know what a football shape looks like, where it's pointed on each end and fat in the middle. Well, these microtubules are going to take on that basic structure through the cell, where the center of the cell will have microtubules in a kind of fat area, and then it'll come to a point at each end. We call those ends the poles of the cell. Now, the point of these spindle microtubules primarily will be to move the chromosomes around. And the points of the football, the points of the spindle, we're going to call the poles. And what they're actually formed by are the centrioles, which are those little microtubule organizing centers normally found near the nucleus. The two centrioles move apart from each other, and they'll form the two poles eventually. And if it's not an animal cell, if it's a plant cell, it's just a centrosome, which is another uh, microtubule organizing center which will start to grow out these microtubules to make up the spindle. Now at the end of prophase, we're going to start to see a lack of a membrane around the nucleus. Once that kind of disappears, we usually consider that we're moving into metaphase. Although, as you can see in this diagram, that's not the most distinctive structure in metaphase. The most distinctive part of metaphase is the fact that those chromosomes are very clearly lined up across the middle of the cell. But as I said a second ago, the, the nuclear membrane is now gone that enables the chromosomes to move freely about the cell. And the way they move is those microtubules from the spindle attaching to the centromere area of the chromosome. Remember, the centromere is what holds the two sister chromatids together. But the specific part of the centromere, there's an attachment point called a kinetochore. And I don't know of any other important thing about the kinetochore other than the fact it's where the microtubules attach and it's something that people who write tests love to ask about, see if you remember that word. It's just kind of a trivial term. But it helps the microtubules to move the chromosomes around. And in doing so, once there is a microtubule from each pole attached to a chromosome, that will kind of shift the orientation of the chromosome so that a sister chromatid is pointed toward each pole, ready to move in that direction. But as we said in the diagrams here, we can see very clearly in the photographs, the distinctive feature is those chromosomes lined up across the middle. And since we already called the ends of the cell the poles, it makes sense to call the middle section the equator. And if we look at the diagram or the photograph on the right here, you can see the microtubules, kind of a hazy area that comes to a point at each end. And you can see that kind of basic football shape of the spindle inside the cell. The third stage of mitosis is called anaphase. And in this point, this is where we see the chromosomes being split apart into sister chromatids and one of each chromatid from each chromosome moving toward the new poles that have formed. They kind of get pulled there. It forms almost 
They almost look like little finger-like structures kind of point away from each other toward each pole. Another very distinctive stage to see underneath a microscope. And the way this happened was the centromere is going to break apart, which will then separate the two sister chromatids, and one of each copy will go to each pole. The way the movement actually takes place is the microtubules that are attached to those chromatids actually start to reduce in size. As they shorten, they end up pulling the chromosomes toward the poles because they stay attached as they get smaller and smaller. So it's going to pull the chromosomes toward the poles. Now, at the same time that this is happening, some microtubules extend all the way from one pole to another, to the other pole, without attaching to chromosomes. And those microtubules actually will grow at this time period. And as they grow, that pushes the poles apart from each other to make sure there's a clear movement of what will become the two nuclei away from each other. That takes us to the final stage of mitosis, which is called telophase. And in telophase, we have two distinct nuclei forming. You can often, as in these photographs here, still see the spindles, the spindle microtubules there that push the poles apart. And we call it telophase when we have the chromosomes fully arrived at the poles. And what used to be the old nuclear membrane, the old nuclear envelope, the phospholipids that made that up kind of form tiny little vesicles, little structures made up of little membranes that start to now fuse back together. And they do this at each new pole, forming a new nuclear envelope around each of the two nuclei. And at that point, we're done with mitosis because we have divided one nucleus into two. Each nucleus has an exact copy of all the original DNA. So each of these two nuclei is genetically identical to each other. That's our goal. I'm barring mutations, of course, which we'll talk about in a later chapter. Now, before we leave mitosis, I just want to go through the stages here. Now, interphase is not part of mitosis. Remember, it's before and after mitosis. But our stages we've discussed today are interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And one way to try to remember those stages in order is to look at those initial letters. And if you try to pronounce them as a word, kind of a nonsense word, you get IPMAT. Well, if you say IPMAT a few times out loud, you'll probably never forget it. And on a test, they'll help you keep the stages in order. But really, the order isn't the most important part. The important part is what's happening in each stage. So remember that interphase is in between the divisions, in between each mitotic division. Prophase is when the poles form, and also when you end up seeing the individual chromosomes forming. Metaphase is when those chromosomes line up at the middle. Anaphase is when the chromosomes move apart from each other. And then, of course, when you get to telophase, that's when there are two nuclei. And so the initial letters of each stage can help you remember what some of the key events are of each one of those stages. Now, before we finish completely, I just kind of let you have you take a look at what's going on with mitosis. And this animation is a kind of cartoony look at it. Now, as we're looking at this, we're going to see those events and watch for them in this cartoony representation compared to the photographs we looked at a moment ago. The cell cycle includes all phases of a cell's life. For about 90% of the cell cycle, the cell is in interphase. During this phase, the cell grows and copies its chromosomes. The chromosomes exist as long, thin strands of DNA within the nuclear envelope and nucleolus. Two centrioles, a single pair, lie at right angles to each other just outside the nucleus. Near the end of interphase, the cell prepares to divide. At this time, the DNA is replicated, producing identical strands called sister chromatids. The sister chromatids of each chromosome are attached to one another at the centromere. The centrioles are also duplicated. Now the division of the cell nucleus into two identical daughter nuclei begins. This process is called mitosis. The first phase of mitosis is prophase. During prophase, the replicated chromosomes condense. 
Sister chromatids remain attached at the centromere. The two centriole pairs move to opposite sides of the cell. The nucleolus and the nuclear envelope dissolve. The mitotic spindle forms between the two centriole pairs. A spindle fiber attaches to the centromere on each chromosome. The spindle fibers begin to move the chromosomes to the center of the cell. The second phase of mitosis is metaphase. The chromosomes line up on a plane in the center of the mitotic spindle. The third phase of mitosis is anaphase. The centromere of each chromosome divides. The sister chromatids separate and are pulled toward opposite ends of the cell by the spindle fibers. The fourth and final stage of mitosis is telophase. Daughter nuclei form at each end of the cell. Mitosis is then complete, but the process of cell division continues. And we're going to see how that continues as cytokinesis. And we have a photograph taken with a compound light microscope here, or a photograph taken with a scanning electron microscope. So you can see kind of an external view. But remember, cytokinesis is going to be after mitosis. And this is when the cell divides the cytoplasm. Now, if it's in an animal cell, which is what we see in the left here, there are microfilaments that contract and kind of pinch in the middle portion to separate the cytoplasm into two pieces and pull the plasma membrane together. And the plasma membrane just pinches in all the way until it separates the two cells from each other. Now, in a plant cell, it's a little more complex because you have the cell wall, of course. And what happens, you can see here forming in between the two nuclei. And keep in mind, this is three-dimensional. It's a plane called the cell plate, made of cellulose like the rest of the cell wall. And that's going to form a new cell wall between the nuclei. And then after that cell plate is formed, you'll get membranes forming along the inside of that. Um, in terms of loss of control, the key thing here is all the cells in your body should be doing mitosis normally and doing interphase in between. But if you've heard of a situation where cells start to stop doing their normal function and cause problems, we call that a tumor, that is cancer. And all of the cells that are dividing instead of doing their normal functions. And as the bell rings here, that's the end of our Chapter 9 notes. Bring your questions to class as always, and have a great day.